Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm excited to bring you another coloring video here on the MFT channel in my Create and Color series. And today I'm going to be painting this cute little piggy card and painting the scene and giving you some tips on a particular type of watercolor painting. I'm using this little set from Daniel Smith. You may have seen these sets. They come with only six colors in these six little pans that I just pointed to. The other colors I've added to them and then made a little swatch card for myself in the top section there. And one of the things that these little sets do is if you put the little swatch card in there, then you don't have a place to mix paint. And even if you tried to mix paint in that top section, there's kind of a crack at the bottom so the paint would leak out. So I have worked on when I'm using these in doing what's called direct to paper painting. I'm not gonna be mixing any colors ahead of time on a palette. You can do that, of course. You can get yourself a plate or something, you know, like a white plate or a, a tile, which I use quite often because I got some really nice small ones from the hardware store that work really well for that purpose. But what this does is help you to practice the art of using the brush with the right amount of water. And that just literally takes practice, practice, practice because you'll get a sense of when you either touch the brush, when you wipe it off on a paper towel or on your hand. Sometimes I'll even just wipe it on the top of my left hand so that I can feel how much water is in there and I can see how much paints out of it. And then I know if I'm picking up too much water so that when I touch it to the, the paint in the palette that I'm going to get too much of a puddle. And that is all a matter of practice. But you can see I'm going back and forth on this over and over again to adjust because I'm trying to make sure that the, each of the little sections look like they're connected to the other sections. You don't want to have a whole bunch of darker blue down in one section and the next one jumps to lighter and then darker again. So I'm going to use a couple different greens here and show you how you can mix to get dimension using this same kind of an idea which is I put down that light spring green and then I'm dropping some darker green on my shadowed areas and just dropping wet into wet. You can do this with dry paint and I'll be showing you a little bit more how that works with dry paint, but it works nicely with wet paint. And I love watching how watercolor drips from one color into another and ends up just making some beautiful colors in between just because of the nature of how the, the water, the pigment, all move across the, the piece of paper. I'm using some Arches watercolor paper here and if you're using some quality watercolor paper you're going to get more movement. If you're using cheap student paper you're going to get less movement and you might get some hard edges. So if you're not getting the kind of results I get when I drop color into color that could be why. So check your paper. And so now I'm going to be painting the little piggy after having done that technique to drop colors in here. And the pink in the quinacridone rose that's in this particular palette is a really pinky pink. And piggies don't tend to be a pinky pink, they're a little more of a salmony pink. And I have a couple different choices here. I can either add a yellow or I can add more of a tomato red. And so that's what I'm gonna be adding is this cadmium red, just a tiny, tiny dab of it. But notice like in that one section at the bottom, I got too much in there. So I can just use my brush to pick it up and pull it around to blend in with everything. And now I've ended up with a pink that's not as pinky pink, if that makes sense. Now I know this is a card, we're not going for realistic color, but I thought it would be a good chance to show you how you can do some slight adjustments to colors. You could also do the same thing by painting it all in, in one color first and then glazing over top of it instead, once it's completely dry, with a light coat of a second color. But I find that it's much more fun to watch the color mix when it's wet and wet, so that's what I decided to do, just to tap in a little bit of that. Now look, I've got too much color in here, so all I have to do is wipe my brush off so that it acts more like a thirsty brush and I can pull some of that color out and then he doesn't look like he has a bloody tummy. <laughs> so lots of different ways that you can use the wet into wet type of an idea. Now I don't have a brown in this set so I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of a quinacridone gold for the tree trunk. And now that the piggy has dried, there's a little time lapse in here. So the piggy has dried so I can do his little nose. I wanted his nose to feel like it's in front of the rest. So I wanted to paint it separately rather than just paint all the way through it. 
And here his nose got really, really pink. So again, I'm going to take a thirsty brush, a drier brush, uh, clean it off with water and then squeeze some of that water out so that the, the color will pull into the brush and then just move it around until I'm satisfied with how it looks. Now the piggy is all dry, so I can add in now some wet on dry color. And look how hard those edges are. And when I dropped it in when it was wet, the color just merged in. And now I need to take a clean brush and just blend out that edge. And that's another place where you have to kind of watch your water management because you don't want to add so much water that you get giant puddles either. You want to have just enough water. And here I wanted to add a little more of that warmer red. So I've, I'm tapping in a little bit into the pink color that's already wet. So now I've got a little dimension going on on the little piggy. Just adding a few little, little tiny details here and there. And I tend to watch my watercolor as it's drying because you can have all sorts of things that start to do weirdness. <laughs> you can start getting little water spots and stuff. And if you want to avoid those, then just keep an eye on it as it's drying and make sure something weird doesn't happen. Now for the grass in the whole background, I'm going to use a lot of this spring green in a very, very light way in the background, just not very much color. And I'm going to build the color as I get toward the foreground, because that's going to give me some of that depth in a really simple way across all of these grasses. And the two stamp sets that these are from, there's a couple of piggies in one set, and then the other set has trees and background elements and the clouds and things so that you can combine those to make a lot of different scenes with a ton of different MFT stamps. So they're going to work with a lot. So even if you're not a piggy colorer, then you can use the scene backgrounds for a lot of other stuff too. So I'm just going to slowly build the color as I get toward the foreground using a darker color as I go, and again, watching my water management. On a big area like this, I'm using a number eight brush just because that's what I started the whole thing out with, but you could also use a bigger brush and that will make it a little bit easier to get that overall smoother blend going. But I'm just gonna keep working at it and keep tending it. And tending is kind of, like I said, what you do as you watch when things are drying. So you'll notice my brush goes back to some older spots as they start to just barely dry to make sure I don't end up with hard edges that I don't want. And so now I'm going to be adding darker, uh, darker sap green toward the front, like thicker paint, basically less water, more paint to make it a darker color as it starts working its way. But I got to tend it to make sure that I get a really nice soft blend still all the way into that background. And just about ready to let it go. And it's always a matter of, do I keep working at it and try to get it perfect? Or do I just let it go? And sometimes you just let it go. So everything's all dry so that my little feet won't uh, bleed into the grass. But to make a brown, I wanted to make little brown feet. And pick one of your colors. So you say you pick a yellow. And you want to add uh, the other two primary colors to it to make a brown. So if, you have, if you're using yellow, then you're going to add something that is a mix of red and blue. So I tried mixing a little bit of the lavender in there, because there's a little bit of red and blue in that. Didn't really work. So I added a drop of Mayan violet in there. And you can keep mixing those colors. So if you don't have a brown color, you mix it by different amounts of red, yellow, and blue. Now here I used... A, a mistake color. I should not have used that phthalo blue in the water. It's a little too bright compared to everything else. The water should reflect the color in the sky, so I dabbed some off. The touch of lavender reminded me that I could use lavender a little bit in the clouds because that'll give them kind of a little bit of a grayish feel, but not, not too strong because it's that nice soft purple. But in order to make that still tied into everything else, because there's no lavender other than the little touch that I tried putting in the feet, I wanted to add a little bit of the cobalt teal blue, the same color I used in the sky. I'm using a little bit in the clouds to make sure that I get that reflection of the same kind of color. So now the whole thing is dry and it's put onto a card base and I cut off a panel of a little scrap to stamp the you hog my whole heart sentiment. And I put a little bit of the blue color down, the same blue in the sky down there, right where I'm gonna put my heart. So I didn't paint the whole thing because I wanted some white down there at the bottom. And then adhered with some dimensional adhesive again, 
the two little hearts. You can find heart dies in lots of your diff different collections of stamps. This is a couple of hearts from a very old punch, like a 15 year old punch. Yes, they really only had punches back then. <laughs> and did a little pink color on them and then the card was complete. So I just have the, the little sentiment banner with its little embellishment to make the card. Just that kiss of perfection. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Make sure you hit that like button and see more over on the MFT blog. And I'll see you guys again next month. Bye-bye now.